Get ready to dive into a world where empires stand on the brink of war and terrible monsters tear at the fragile borderlands of men. The Adventurer Conqueror King System Imperial Imprint, or as we like to call it, Axe 2, is now live on Kickstarter. Axe 2 is the new edition of the acclaimed best-selling fantasy role-playing game. You'll find everything you need to enjoy epic fantasy campaigns with a sweeping scope. Whether you want to crawl through dungeons, experiment with alchemy, crossbreed monsters, run a merchant emporium, raise an undead legion, or even conquer an empire, Axe 2 supports your playstyle. Axe 2 integrates experience point mechanics, making campaign activities a seamless part of the core gameplay loop. Your character levels up in new and exciting ways each time you play, adding massive replayability to each of your adventures. Axe 2 offers 18 character classes, 378 spells, new combat mechanics, and so much more. Support Axe 2 on Kickstarter today. And welcome to Knocked Prone, a podcast of high crits, small fits, and varying wits. My name is Cade, and I'm the host and dungeon master of this Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition adventure. And I am joined here by the players to my left. Mason, playing look here. Brooklyn, playing Litzy. Jameson, playing that, formerly known as Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, playing Taz. Caden, playing Torrin. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So you guys last session went through uh, the first portion of this castle, the uh, c- the Winter Court Castle. You found some statues, uh, found a secret room with a cool mirror on the inside, and Litzy turned into a dragon and tested a lot of rhyming, which he will probably continue doing this session. And <laughs> with that... Um, Look here, you just ended last session with going into this portal that took you into a library. What are you doing? Obviously, looking at all the books, are they in languages I can read? At least from first glance. Is this a library he would recognize? Like, this isn't just, like, the library, right? That would be pretty (laughs) cool, though. Great Grimbopolis. Yeah, the library. Uh, Yeah. Entered the Twilight Zone. (laughs) Paper golems come out. It's a whole shenanigan. But as you enter... these bookcases that are in front of you are towering, and they somehow seem to re- defy reality. They soar high at odd, tilted angles that seem like they should be tipping over at this point. There are banners fluttering in non-existent breeze that each depict a sigil of the separate courts of the Feywild, one being a giant, one being a pixie, one being a satyr, and one being a dragon. The ceilings look endless next to these gigantic bookcases, but if you were to peer your head up high enough you would see that there's a a four foot break that separates bookcase from sky high ceiling if you'd like to investigate some of the books you are well well welcome to i will cast attack magic magic first because roll me a wild magic check um a 16 yeah that's good and a 53 you cast five giant kernels of popcorn out of your hand, and like magic missile darts, they deal 1d4 plus 1 force damage to each target that you are targeting. So you just... A bunch of popcorn kernels out of your hand in this library at books trying to detect magic. But nothing really happens with that, considering there aren't any em- enemies present. But while you detect magic... Question. Yes. Does would remove curse remove my... Uh wild magic modifier thing as well it would not it's not a curse it's it's a blessing (laughs) (laughs) Um, that's subjective (laughs) you ungrateful but with detect magic on um just if there are any books that are magical obviously paying attention to those otherwise um my priority would be books on gods or demons in general books on my father Mm -hmm. books on Vecna in particular, as well as any information that details like the strength mm-hmm. and any potential way to break Fey um, bargains. Okay, so as you are looking through these books, go ahead and roll me an investigation. Um, I'm going to use inspiration. Okay, it was a natural two. Okay, 
18 plus 8, so 26. Wonderful. Uh, as you were investigating, you investigated so good, go ahead and gain a point of inspiration. Uh, <laughs> because I feel bad. Because these books are blank. Oh, all of them? All of them are blank. <laughs> But they are magical. I'll just take a bunch of random ones, particularly anything that is colorful. <laughs> You're like, I'm even more orders. interested now. Yeah. <laughs> even better. Yeah. <laughs> journal number one, journal number two. <laughs> Roll me a d20. Seven. As you pull out a bunch of these books, one of them <laughs> opens a hidden compartment into the center of the library just like seeing this happen i'll immediately drop all the books that i would have grabbed and start heading in is there anything noticeable or is there just more books on like the other side and are these books shelves double cased in that i'm able to see the bindings of books from this side as well or is it just the pages from the books that would be facing Outward here. So there are separate books on this. So okay. in the center of this room, there was four bookcases, each making like a square um, that was pretty closed off. But as you pulled out a bunch of these books, um, you pulled the correct book, a entrance opened up, and there are books on the other side that the spine or binding of these books are facing outwards. I'll take the first one like to my right and just pull it off the shelf. Is it blank as well? Um, No. You pull off a book. Roll me a d12. Five. Nelson Nelson. <laughs> Perfect. I'll kind of start looking through, and I think I'm starting to understand what's going on here. You see all of Nelson Nelson's life events transcribed into this book. Are any pages ripped as I'm Pages going are through? ripped. Uh, specifically, so Nelson Nelson seems to have done some sort of campaign trying to get an elected position into the Feywild. Um, and then uh, he's doing really, really well in the polls. And then like 20 pages are ripped out. Okay. I will continue looking. And in particular, I want to find, I want to try to find anyway, Raven okay. and Adelina. Okay. If those are separate. Um, as well as um, anything on, I guess, may as well my father, his name was written on the building next to this. So if he has a book, as well as Litsy's mom, I forgot her name. Bonnie. Bonnie. And then Jack, if there's anything. <laughs> <That's> spicy. <laughs> Amongst the books, the other names that are kind of notable that you recognize, you don't see anything for Jack, Adelina, Raven. Um, most of the names that you named weren't really there. It seems very specific. Um, the names that you see are Tony, full Nelson Nelson, Jimmy, three quarters Nelson Nelson, Bobby, half Nelson Nelson, Willie, quarter Nelson Nelson, Mickey, little Nelson Nelson, and Ricky, no Nelson Nelson. So it's just all the Nelsons. <laughs> all that's the it. Nelsons. And that is it. Okay. I will go, and as I'm like taking each book and finding it, I'll kind of like just toss it on the ground behind me as I'm like actually searching for my real goal. And then. Um, as soon as I don't see it, I'll grab um, the two giants that are with us, mm -hmm. essentially. I'll grab both of their books. So the artist formerly known as Giant's book is also there. Okay. I'll get um, Full Nelson Nelson's book as well as just like the ones that I've met yeah. um, or know of is, mm -hmm. are the ones that I'll take. And then I will just look around the rest of the library and see if... I'll basically just go to each one of the bookshelves and just open up a book and see if it's blank. If it is, I'll move on. And then other than that, I'll just explore the room. Where you left your mirror, there is still a portal leading to the uh, center room because there are no doors in this other than that portal. Okay. Um, any ideas of bargaining with this hag have now been just completely lost at the discovery of this. Um, at least for a look here. His personal bargain. I'm not going right. to... He is livid at the moment. At which point, if I can't see if there is anything remaining of value, I will try to topple this bookcase into the rest of them and um, exit through the portal. All right, roll me strike check. It's going to be the same thing as the original library where I just push and... Fine. <laughs> Natural one. Oh no! So the with books, a minus one, zero. I, <laughs> the books push back. <laughs> you fall onto the ground and you take 
three points of bludgeoning damage. My ward will block it as a little cushion under me. But I will stand up and just fine and <laughs> turn out the the um, the library and yeah. go back into the original room. Mm-hmm. Um, at, at which I obviously would be reconvening with the group. Yes. Um, so let's g- do what you guys were doing while. So, let's see. You um, were a dragon for a little while. Would you like to uh, play out that minute, or would you like to let that minute pass? I was just chilling, because I didn't want to create a disruption. So I would say at this point, I'm no longer yeah. a dragon. Do I transform? Hess is, like, slowly creeping up, tries to get some, like, neck scratches in while you're in dragon form and then you like turn back to Litzy. <laughs> uh, you actually turn back into your hag form. Okay, that's what I was wondering. So I like turn around and give you a really mean stare. Probably spook you a little bit. <laughs> a little spook, yeah. And uh, as you turn back into a hag Litzy, that wall, again, you know the Jumanji music that it's like... And you hear it everywhere. That's what that is basically what that wall is doing to you right now. So with with the with the bizarreness of the wall and then the water wall the test put up and then <laughs> the spell that he cast it turned me into a dragon which caused panic back into hag form. Um, I am forgetting about what my point was in being back here and what my goal was, and so I'm going to head towards the wall. Okay. So you head towards the wall. You guys watch as Litzy walks towards this electrical wall. Yeah, I'll like call out once, back. L- Litzy, are you are you gonna go I get cut electrocuted? You off. Turn around. Leave me alone. You see Litzy walk into this electrical field. It encapsulates her. She walks straight through the crystalline wall and disappears. So, so who is there to witness that? Jack, Torin, and. Tess. Okay. Torin was up on the banister. Jack and Tess were with you, basically. I happened to be facing towards you while I was talking to one of the yeah. Eldrin. You, like, as they're, like, droning on about how much money they donated to Adeline's yeah, campaign. Yeah, and I'm like, all right, whatever. While I'm up there, I'm gonna, like, whistle really loud to get I'll look. Uh, Jack's attention and then just like call him up to the top of the stairs let's see you travel through this wallway and you disappear from everyone's sight and you go towards this room you see the wall basically open up before you and you see your aunt standing in the room and um with that i think we're gonna have to finish that with a solo session i know you need to get to bed because you've got a big day tomorrow (laughs) So I will let you get to bed, and we'll record a solo session sometime this week. Awesome. Awesome. Let's see out. Let's see out. All right. Thanks for being here, Brooke. So now that she's gone. (laughs) (laughs) The boys. Torin, Tess, and Jack, you guys are at the top of this of this staircase that Torin uh, had previously explored with the statue of a horseman that is weaponless. And Torin, what what are you telling them? Uh, So as Jack approaches i'm gonna say follow me and then we'll congo line and yeah. and walk like Boys are back in town. yep exactly uh, <laughs> over to the statue i'll just say i think this needs a spiritual weapon or something and then i can cast yeah I, yeah i can cast fire on the top of his head i explain the the what the what it says what it says i'm like i it must do something so let's try it out does this statue, is this like a one-handed or a two-handed weapon that looks like it's supposed to be holding? A one-handed weapon. One-handed weapon? Mm-hmm. All right. Then, um... It's got a shield on the other arm. Then a long sword, I guess. I'll, uh, summon a long sword, and then I'll... Can I, like, slide it into its closed hand? Like, yeah. you know, pommel? So you, you slide your uh, eldritch weapon mm-hmm. into its hands, and, it, like, the, the fingers of it grasp around oh. the sword. Um, and move a little bit, and you you say, Ron, no! (laughs) (laughs) You want to stop Professor Snape or not? (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Uh, Uh, But, yeah, he's currently clutching onto your Eldritch uh, weapon that you've created. Yeah, and I I firebolt it. Okay, so you cast Firebolt at this uh, this knight's head. Go ahead and roll me a wild magic check. But as you do that, a purple button will pop out of the helmet's mouthpiece, and it will be openly attainable. 
as well as Lakir, as you are traveling through the portal, you notice that with the books, you also picked up a uh, a little a little parasite yellow button that came with you. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you guys have a purple button now and a yellow button now. There's the blue button underneath the crystal. And there's the blue button underneath the crystal, and um, you uh, have all noticed now as you are in this main room the silver plates that have a four inch dynam- diameter hole that um, seems to look like it would contain one of the buttons each. Where are the plates? Tess, where Litzy walked through the wall, the electrified wall, yeah, yeah. there are five plates that have little circular holes in the center of them waiting to be filled. Can I use my Tides of Chaos for a wild magic roll? Yeah, of course. For my d20? Okay. Sure. Okay, so 12. Oh! oh! <laughs> This is what that is. Okay. Get ready to make a wish. Uh, that is on that is on the highest table, so you're about to get the coolest thing. Okay. Better not waste it. On a 17. Roll a d12. 11. So you gain a ninth level spell scroll in your possession. Would you like power word kill or weird? Oh my god. Power word kill? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. the one. You yeah. gain the, the spell <laughs> power word kill. Awesome. As a ninth level spell, you get all the best wild magic rolls. <laughs> this is ridiculous. That. Yeah. It's because I've, it's cause I've <laughs> rolled on him so much, my chances are just higher. Yeah, you have a scroll now. You cast Firebolt on the statue, <laughs> gain Power Word Kill as a spell scroll, gain a purple button, and you guys are you guys are two out of five buttons down. As I'll assume that about. In this time frame would have been the time I was in the library. Right. Yeah, so you appear back. Uh, Torin is pointing his finger at Jack and saying, Don't make me do it. (laughs) (laughs) I do have less than 100 hit points. (laughs) I would just immediately walk out of the room in the middle of the room um, and just be shouting, Adelina, you coward! Face us now! And that's uh, like to the general room, just yelling at the ceiling, basically. All the Aladrin seem to look at you. I stone gaze at them back. I-, I won't say anything, but I'll just kind of get my hands ready if things turn combative. There's like a hundred Aladrin in here, by the way. Yeah, I've got my dragon statue at the ready. We can take them. <laughs> Bro, you just gotta kite them through the stairwell. We You're can right. do it. You're right. <laughs> You'll look gotta at run the, the train, dude. Yeah. Circles. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he'll look at just everyone up by the statue um, and just say she's using my father's magic to control these people as well and I'll look at the giants um, and I'll say uh, as well as you and your friends and I'll produce both of the books and hand them out here is your life story everything you'll remember anyway if you notice there's missing parts in your memory it's because Adelina tore the pages out the giants will look at the pages and they give you a really weird look as you have come out yelling, handed them these books, and these books are blank. Of course, and all. Um, not to you. Oh, not to, to me. Them. To them. They look at these books and they're like, um, hey, little dude, you know, I'm really for your cause, and I mean, you're with, you're with Tom the Bomb, but this is getting a little weird. I concur. You think that I would lie about this? What what reason do I have? I'm on your side. We've established that. Okay. One of the Aladrin are going to look over at you and laugh. It's a familiar cackle. You've maybe heard Litzy do this once or twice. Are, are the Aladrin kind of gathering around me, or are they just staring at me? They're from- just staring at you okay. throughout the room. There's That's a bunch. freaky, dude. Yeah. And they're all, um, now you guys all are able to see what Lithy oh, was no. seeing, that their eyes are just black. Oh, my God. It would be so I scary. would just... <sighs> I'm sorry if this ruins anything, but um, Lakir is just going to yell out, Working through pawns, unable to face us yourself, coward! And just generally echoing I'm out to everything and just getting more and more infuriated at the second. Obviously, he doesn't like being laughed at. <laughs> right, right. Um, but after the end of the cackling, the Eldrin will like wipe its eye and say, it wasn't your father's magic. You're working with my magic. I made this. 
It's vile just the same. And the Eldrin will wave its hand up. Test make me a constitution saving throw. It's not a spell. Test make me uh. a constitution saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> good, uh. good reflex, though. <laughs> well, I'm really sorry. Oh, no. <clears throat> the purple goop will raise and get the no. right back into oh. your skin. And you are again infe- infected with this purple goop. And the Eldrin looks at you again, Lakir, and says, You don't know what you're dealing with. I already have what I wanted. Look around. Where's my niece? She's with me. And you were all pawns to get her to me. What say I kill you now? What's stopping me? It's your question to answer. The Eldrin will start to approach you. You'll hear Jack from above. Yeah, what's stopping you? Yeah. <laughs> Why are we still alive? Yeah. <laughs> At which point, if, if <laughs> things start, I have uh, Fireball, Lightning Bolt, and Arms of Hadar as area of effect spells that I'm just going to start. Like, Light them up. Yeah, I am just going <laughs> to just start going wild if if they start like right. seeming like they're going to attack, right. of course. The, the Eldrin will stop. Pause. Look over at you, Jack. You recognize me? Uh, are they wearing a mask? Yes. No. Uh, <laughs> I'll use Mage what? Hand if I can. Yeah. Just, like, pull it down. So it'll oh, just no. be a random Eldrin, but through the crowd, your father will approach. And <gasps> um, you see that this sea of Al- Eldrin, you know how all the Eldrin have been missing? They're here. So you'll see all these Eldrin are being controlled somehow, and they don't seem to be very in control of what's happening, is um, and your ring that you're wearing will start to pulsate. And you will hear a voice inside your head that says, kill them. Kill them. It's a cursed item. The ring is a cursed item? Uh-huh. The ring of remove curse uh-huh. is a cursed item. Uh-huh. I hate Makes that. <laughs> I hate that. I never would have expected that. Thanks, Reddit. (laughs) That's awesome. Tess being very concerned, he's going to prepare healing spirit in case people start getting attacked. So this is not the same one that Lakir was talking to? No. uh, Your your father has approached from the group, but he Uh also has the blackened eyes. You'll probably hear Tess scream an expletive for like the first time. Just like, no! As like the purple goose sinks back into him. Yeah. Just like yells, throws like the lion away from him, like to make sure he doesn't like hurt him and just like is screaming, barely even actually retaining control of himself. Whereas normally he would have to have taken damage to have the fight or flight, but right now he's like barely maintaining control. Your father will look at you, Jack, and he will say, Raven has a deal for you. Don't take it, Jack. She's a liar and a coward. Raven has a deal for you. Son, you are half mortal. Wouldn't you like to be immortal? I honestly am baffled because I was not prepared for it to be like this okay. if we encounter Look here, my dad. Look here will just yell back and just say, the price isn't worth the reward. Interesting. Your father's head? Power, spells, gems, anything you could have ever wanted, not worth? I've learned better than to make deals with hags. And Tess, he'll, Jack's father will wa- wave his finger up. The purple goop will come out of your throat for a second, and then he will slam dunk it back in. And, ah! <laughs> and he'll be, he'll say... You'd give anything to get rid of this curse. And Torin, your people, I could have had them killed in the summer court. I preserved them as humans. Wouldn't you like to be reunited? And wouldn't you like to have Litzy back? She's mine now. I can give her back. You're not my dad. I was not prepared for this. (laughs) My want would just be to shout out a counter argument for everything that he is stating. um, In being that... Um, Tess, I can get you back to normal. I I t- promise it'll just take time. And Torin, remember, she did kill your people. 
She only spared the ones that are alive because we made her. I have so many spells that you won't have for eons. I've seen your futures. I've looked into my crystal ball, and I know the choices you make. Now, of course, not everything is set. There are crossroads to every fate, and this is one of them. Take my deal, and get the power you want. Reject my deal, you're on your own. What's the price of this power? If you've got my dad, you've got Litzy, what's the cost? You've got the things you wanted, right? What is the cost? Because that is not my dad. I can release your dad. And Litzy, well, she's family. She stays with me. But I could lend her to you for a short period of time. She is not an object. She's not an object. She's mine. cannot be lent. She, I... I'm blood. Of course I know that. It doesn't sound like it. What? You gonna get mad? You gonna get mad? You think your dad is here? You think that an it matters? El- an Eldrin will walk up to your dad, place a hand on his shoulder, and your father, Jack, will fall to the floor dead. He doesn't care about us. I know. You know what I care about? Winning. Care about all of you. No, you together. don't. You care about winning. What do you want? What is your end goal? I want Litzy. Why? She's a crimson hag. What does that have to do with it? Why? I need Why a, do you want her? I need a coven. Why? For power. What is your end game? <laughs> you want to be in charge? I already am in charge. Look at look around. So what do you here. want then? If you're in charge, what do you want? Tell me what you want. I want to make you a deal to help Why? you out. If you wanted to help us out, you'd just do it. You don't want to help us. What do you want? Well, you see, I have this demon inside of me. We all have our demons, lady. I understand. This okay. is a specific demon. Look okay. here. I believe you are very familiar with this demon. You watched your father sleep through Vecna's eye. You saw the half of, well, the other half of me. I am not that full demon, but I have possessed half of that demon in me, and half of that demon has gone to your father, Amalek. So you're in league with him? No. Quite the opposite, actually. We were both suitors of power. Your father had the potential for the most power in the material plane and I held the the power of the most potential power in the Feywild this demon Arakshasa chose both of us and said the victor can encapsulate me in all my power I want your father dead and if that if the cost of that is Immortality, Jack. Ending a measly curse, Tess, and to bring back the draconic people, Torin. By all means, why wouldn't I want that? As a hag, I assume you're familiar with the pleasure of suffering. As such, I hate to inform you, but my father stays alive for that reason. Oh, well... I don't need you to kill him. I need you to take the demon out of him. Whether that's death, whether that is beating him into a position of powerlessness, that he can no longer prove to the Rakshasa that he is even in the running with me. Of course, that's what I want. I want whatever you want, as long as it ends with me obtaining my goals, and you obtaining yours. I know that hags are familiar with suffering, but why let it be your suffering? Quite the opposite. I intend to relish in my father's. Exactly. Why you could leave here without my deal. Your father wins. He takes my half. 
So during this whole conversation, Tess has just sat down on one of the steps and is like basically meditating, but like like twitching hard every once in a while, just like barely controlling himself. Be calm, my child. And you will feel the chaos that is the purple goop inside of you subside. It's still there, but you don't feel it. Wouldn't you want this all the time? I could give you this and more. I could give you a grasshopper who live, outlives you by 200,000 times your lifespan. I could give you anything you wanted. All I ask is for one simple one half of a demon to be taken out of Amalek, a man that you all hate. So what? We replace one tyrant with another. You would rob a man of his money, then give it to him as a prize. And then, when he attempts to kill you, would you be surprised? And I'm gonna attempt to change forms anyways. Yeah. Uh, roll me a constitution saving throw. 16! 16? Uh, yeah, you, you change into your dark test form. And I attack her. Become my child. It subsides. It subsides. Oh, I fall out. You don't win here. You know that, right? You have no coven. You're alone. Look around. You see Mama Sherry? Do you see Litzy? They won't join. They're already here. I don't believe it. I don't believe that Litzy handed you what you wanted. You stood by and watched Litzy change. You... Saw so, what she was. Because I know Litzy. I know Litzy. I see the future. I am her aunt. I raised the girl. I've lived with her in present. But presently, I am living with her. You've lived with her in past. Would you like my deal, or would you like to leave? What's your deal? I would like Amalek, his half, to be removed. And in return, I will give you the shame that you would like to give your father, Look here, I will give you the immortality that you seek without the price of a measly god over your head, Jack. And Tess, I will take this sickness away from you and, you know, out of good measure, I could even cure it entirely. I could show you the secrets. Torin. I could show you the secrets of this purple goop to allow you to harness it, to create life instead of take it. And by doing so, you could have your people back. He could give you anything you ever wanted. And all I ask is one simple task of taking half of what is already mine. Why can't you do it? Why do we have to do it? The if de- you're so much better you're right. than us. I understand. The demon inside of me uh-huh. forbids interference. We're in a competition, after all. What's the scoring standard? <laughs> who wins and who loses based off of power in their realm. So Feywild is mine. Amalek has the material plane. Yeah. So if you're stronger, you'll win, right? Are you afraid you're going to lose? Is that the problem? You think you're going to lose to Amalek and that's why we have to go solve your problem and you have to kidnap our fathers hey, and kill them please. right in front of us because you're weak and you can't do it on your own and, and you have to coward. kidnap our friends? Are you that much of a coward? Is that where we're at? Are you that worthless? Make me a constitution saving throw. 17. You are transported to the material plane. You stand inside of Great Grumbopolis. Banished. <laughs> Am I able to counterspell since that was a spell? Uh, you could. Could I attempt to, anyway? Yeah. I have advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. Roll me again. Natural 20. Oh. Natural 20. You fade back into existence, and she says, Huh. Interesting. Well, I would like to cast banishment on her. I mean, I guess she's talking through with Eladrin, huh? Yeah. I probably wouldn't do that then. Your intelligence tells you that there's a bunch here, and uh-huh. they all seem to be conduits. Yeah. You've countered my banishment. 
you've floated into the existence, at least, of Great Grumbopolis. I could send you back. One flick. Do it. Bet. You already failed. <laughs> uh, I wish I could just kill you, but... Do it. I don't kill me. want to. Do it. I don't want to. Why not? Because, I want because to you need me? I want to You need you. me? She needs I... us all. Yes. Why? Because you suck? Poor. Then why would we help you? If you're the inferior choice, why would we help you when Amalek could probably give us all the things and more Do you that we want? Do you care for your friends? Of course. Have you ever seen a close person die? Too many. Would you like to see more? I already watched my dad die. Well, bring it on. Bring in Yui, please. And the Eldrin will bring in Yui. Where's three quarters, Nelson? Speaking of, the giants, are they reacting to... Yeah, what about everyone else? Literally, she just <laughs> self-professed that she is a hag. Are they reacting to any of this information, or are they just under her spell as well? They are reacting to the information, but they are awestruck. Okay. I'll turn to them just at, after you asked that, and I'll... You see? She's probably killed your friend as is, well. Uh, is Mama Sherry still... She is currently with Litzy and Raven. The cure, are you, are you still down there? Um, yeah, I would say for the most part, I mean, yeah, I probably wouldn't have moved. If anything, I would have just... I would have my sword out in case anyone rushed and a free um, a free arm ready to cast a spell if need be. So I'm going to cast message and tell you to uh, get to the top of the stairs. <laughs> Roll me a wild magic yeah. <laughs> 13. So 19. Yeah. And you cast this. Lakir, you uh, is the target of the message spell, correct? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the target shrivels and becomes dehydrated only to be restored to their former state if placed in water. Okay. Metagame, I know the reason the purple goop initially didn't, like, harm me the same way it did everybody else is because I I didn't want to hurt anybody and I was a pacifist. So as, like, Tess, like, actively wants to kill her, does that change? It does does start to hurt. But it does not kill you. You still have an innate. You're still a good person. You're still a good person. <laughs> you're wanting Just to kill you're something a bad evil. Guy like, doesn't make you a bad guy. Yeah. Thanks, Satan. Good people <laughs> still can kill evil things. So, yeah, but like evil. I start to like feel the burn. Passes again, even though she has calmed. The actual effects of the purple goop go, returns like that meditation state of trying to just control himself. Right. Can I move while shriveled? You I'm, can't. I, you are dehydrated like a little cube, like in Megamind. Oh, I thought gotcha. he was just like, like crazy. <laughs> no, guy. yeah, you are You oh. are like a de- dehydrated Can I fruit. hydrate him with water? Yeah. <laughs> uh, roll me a wild magic <laughs> table. As I bend water over to hydrate my friend, it's an eight. Oh, oh nice. So 13 total. So 13 and 20. So that's the medium table. You immediately gain 15 temporary hit points. Nice. Well, so as I hydrate him, Tess is like, losing AC. We need to get out of here. Let's let's just leave. Not without Litzy. Oh. You don't get Litzy without my deal. Didn't you listen? Kill Amalek or subdue him and take the demon from him. Take his power from him. And I give you what you want in return. What if the only thing we want is to have him killed and or subjugated? Can you do that for us? Well, no. Why not? Because you didn't fulfill your end of the bargain first. What if we made a different deal? Well, you could. What would it take for you to kill Amalek instead? It would take the leaving of my of my demon half because I'd be sacrificing that. And, I mean, eternal torment sounds good to me, if that's the deal that you'd like. I could give you, instead of giving you the immortality that you seek of paradise, I could send you to my own circle of the nine hells, where we would hang out every day. You'd be my best friend. You could kill him is what you're telling me, though. Unwillingly, yes. I don't want to. So we have to kill him? You Otherwise you lose you two? You don't have to kill him. 
I am. No, no, no. Right. Don't twist my words, lady. <laughs> no, He's I, getting upset again. Like, right, right. You know. <laughs> And dad is still dead on the floor. Um, <laughs> you are such... Mortis. I know I'm infuriating, right? My he... dad told me the same thing before he died. Now, tell me. She will resurrect your father. Cool. And he will stand, and she will break the curse on him, and his eyes will unblacken. And he keeps going off. If you can kill Amalek, why make us this deal? I can't kill Amalek without losing my demon. I want my so, demon. So, what, but what if you kill Amalek? Then you win, right? No. If Why not? I, you want the demon. If I The leave, demon is the win condition? Yes. Yes. The demon is the win condition. So you wouldn't make me this deal anyway, to get rid of your demon? I don't want to get rid of my demon. Yeah, but you said, you know, if I join you in the nine circle, in your circle of hell, right? I mean... But is me, is torturing me forever, me, worth losing everything you want? <laughs> Jack, always questioning yourself, never seeing your potential. Oh, I know my potential. No. Unfortunately, you don't. Bet. Because if you saw your potential, you would not waste your time trivializing this deal that I'm making you for immortality if you knew the things that you could accomplish within a millennia you wouldn't sit here and quabble with me over s tiny minute details I would the details matter what the details matter they're the important part hmm hmm details are the difference between an eternity of paradise, an eternity of suffering. Well, true. I don't want to see Litsy die. So don't kill her? Then leave. I don't want you here. Would you kill her if we didn't? You kill Litsy, we kill you. <laughs> yeah, if you kill Litsy, you don't get a coven. <laughs> I'm not going to kill my only chance at a coven. Good. She's family. She's blood. You are yesterday. And everyone make me a constitution saving throw. Boy, oh boy. Is this banishment again? This is banishment. Yeah, uh, counterspell. Okay. An attempt at the very least. Natural 20. <laughs> okay. Fine. Power word kill. Look here, you are dead. Can I counterspell that? <laughs> okay. Uh, 17. Does not pass. Yeah, figured. Everyone roll me a constitution saving throw. Uh, 24. 24? 19. 19. 18. Torin, you stay. Jack, Tess, you are transported back to the material plane. Torin, you stand above Lakir's motionless body. And with that, I think that's where we're going to end our session for tonight. My name is Cade, and I'm the host and dungeon master of this Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition adventure, and I am joined here by the players to my left. Mason, played Lakir. <laughs> <laughs> Jameson, playing Jack. Danny playing Tess. Caden playing Torin. All right, awesome. If we didn't give you enough emotional trauma this session, wait till next session. Love you, bye. <laughs>